What's going on YouTube? It's Tej back again with another video and today we're moving on to our final division in the AFC in our 2021 NFL season preview. Kind of wild how fast we have moved along but nonetheless we start the AFC North by talking about the Baltimore Ravens. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you do, please hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel and want more sports content like this in your life, please consider subscribing. And let me hear your Baltimore Ravens takes down in the comments section. How many wins? Who are some X factors? What are some games to watch? I'd love to have your thoughts. Let's have a discussion about the Ravens down below. Win range, 10 to 13 wins. This, look, this is one of the better teams in the AFC. I think Cleveland's slightly better overall with the roster. I just have a few less question marks. And we'll kind of get that here in a little bit. But nonetheless, this is still a really, really good team. And especially if Greg Roman, the OC, can learn from his errors in San Francisco where he didn't continue to innovate and make the offense new-ish while he had Colin Kaepernick. If he can break that spell and, you know, rejuvenize the offense, specifically in the passing game for Lamar Jackson, this is one of the toughest offenses to slow down. With that rushing attack of, you know, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, and Lamar Jackson, that's as good as it gets, right? And if they can just be good at passing the ball they can pick up a few third and longs if Lamar Jackson can specifically be good throwing in between the numbers you'd like to see him improve outside the numbers but if he can hit throws over the middle of the field to guys like Mark Andrews Rashad Bateman we'll talk about later Sammy Watkins and continue to move the chains when they get behind the chains early down running situations this is a tough offensive stop and then a few question marks on defense but it's also a defense full of playmakers like Marlon Humphrey Marcus Peters for my money, best cornerback duo in the league right now, right there with Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. I mean, it's elite, and they create tournaments with the best of them. Marcus Peters is a boom and bust guy, but when he comes away with the boom plays, it's going back for six, and Marlon Humphrey, he can rush off the edge. He's got a ton of potential to create fumbles. I mean, it, it's a stellar defense in a lot of ways, and even guys like Clayus Campbell, who are into their upper 30s, are still giving you good production. I have this team coming away with 11 wins, and... When I redo my 2021 season prediction video, it might go up because I had them splitting with Pittsburgh and overall, where I stand right now, I think the Ravens might take both games with the Steelers. I think they match up with them really, really well. But nonetheless, this is obviously a really solid team. So that 10 to 13 win range feels about right for Baltimore. I have a hard time thinking they don't win double digit games. 14 wins, probably pushing it. So again, I feel comfortable with my win range. 11 wins where I have them at. Realistic goal. Find success in the past game. And again, this comes down to Greg Roman. I didn't want to put a coach in the X Factors. I might change that though once we get to the NFC. A little cheeky of me to do that late. But uh, Greg Roman, like I said, had Colin Kaepernick and had a lot of initial success with that dual threat QB. But then the offense got stale and teams figured it out. That can't be the case with a guy like Lamar Jackson. You have got to maximize the uh, freak athlete that he is. But he also has a rocket for an arm. He's not always super accurate with it, but he can chuck it down the field so you need to come away with plays that you know set up a guy like Hollywood Brown to have success down the field right and Sammy Watkins is like the oldest 27 year old in the league I've said that a few times throughout my channel's history but he's still a quality player when he is out there he's like a good starting wide receiver and you need to have some success with him and he needs to be able to show the ropes to a guy like Rashad Bateman who Feels like a baby Allen Robinson. That's kind of who I comped him to throughout the draft process. He's literally a little bit smaller. Um, pre his uh, his pro day, he was listed at like 6'3", 215, which was, you know, in that Allen, range, Allen Robinson range, excuse me. But obviously he's down at like 6'1", 190. I think some of that weight will come back after, you know, he had COVID at Minnesota this past year. But Rashad Bateman has the making of a wide receiver one. He was my wide receiver four in a loaded wide receiver draft class. So he's got a ton of talent. And I think he's exactly what this team needs. A guy who can win at the sticks, big body, win at the catch point, and just keep the chains moving. If they can figure out this passing game, that goes a long way for this team going from playoff contenders to Super Bowl contenders. And for the reach goal, win the Super Bowl. I said this about Kansas City. There's like a handful of teams, maybe two, that I think have a legit pathway to winning the Super Bowl. Baltimore certainly in that contention. They're probably on that second tier, whether or not they're with, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, Kansas City, um, maybe even Cleveland and Buffalo, but more so Green Bay if they have Aaron Rodgers. It's probably that pool of the top two, and then maybe you lump in Green Bay. And then take a step down for guys and teams overall that need a little bit of help to get there. Uh, and we'll have to come away with the big upset, knocking off a uh, top seed being Tampa Bay and Kansas City. But Baltimore has a pathway to do it, right? If they run the football and they do so with a ton of success and they just take the ball away from Patrick Mahomes, 
this team has a way of doing it. They improve the passing game. That's a well-rounded offense with a turnover-inducing uh, defense. They'll create a lot of big plays. I see it happening. It's not impossible. So they should definitely go in with a reach goal of winning the Super Bowl. Let's talk about some of these X factors. We talked about Rashad Bateman a little bit already, but this is a guy with the makings of wide receiver one, and this team needs one desperately. Damon Watkins, I think, is a good player still. When he's out there on the field, obviously injuries are a big concern, but when he's out there, he's good, but he's not a wide receiver one. He, he is just not that guy. He's proven to not be that dude in the NFL. He's a nice compliment wide receiver, but he's not a wide receiver one. Bateman, though, could be that guy down the line. I think it helps having someone like Samuel Watkins in the building there working with you. And then also you move Hollywood Brown down to a field stretching slot position, which I think fits him a lot better than being an outside number one guy drawing the tough assignment against the team's best cornerback. So Bateman has the makings, has the big body, has the catch radius, huge wingspan. And overall, I think he is exactly what this team needs on third and eighth, like I've said in this hypothetical a thousand times, where they get behind the chains on first and second down, not able to have early running success. This is ultimately what Buffalo did in the divisional round against them. Made him throw on third and eight, and they just couldn't do it. And also, if Rashad Bateman's able to make some plays and move the chains, it takes a lot of pressure off of Mark Andrews. So, one of those things where if Bateman plays really well and can make an immediate impact, it helps out Mark Andrews, and hopefully his drop problems go away if you're a Ravens fan. Bradley Bozeman, um, I'm going with the Goat House's logic here. If you don't know who he is, definitely check out great YouTuber, good football mind, uh, love his content. Uh, right now, slated on our lads as a starting left guard. I think that's going to be Ben Cleveland's job and Bozeman, who has some center experience, kicks inside to guard. Matt Scora had a tough time snapping the football last year, and uh, in a run-heavy team, a center is more important than in other situations. Overall, it's probably the least valued position across the offensive line, but they do play a factor, right? Like, they can see the entire field. A lot of times, they're trusted with, you know, um, the, the blocking schemes and some of the adjustments you make and how you shift uh, at the line of the scrimmage. So, this one's going to have a big role there, and if he just can snap the ball to Lamar Jackson, take away some of those turnovers that Matt Scura had last year, obviously that helps out this team a ton. So if he does shift from guard to center, that's a big role. But even if he starts at left guard, you have Kevin Zeitler on the other side. You have Ronnie Stanley back from injury at the left tackle position. Alejandro Villanueva is going to be a good right tackle. Really, you look at guard and center as uh, left guard, that is, and center as the uh, last two question marks across the offensive line. If Bozeman's good, you can hide bad center play as long as the snaps are getting into the hands of Lamar Jackson. And then last but not least, Adafi Owe. Disclaimer, I hate having first-round picks on here because, like, duh, they're obviously X-Factors, and I have two of them on here, so I know that's kind of a cop-out move, but this is a well-rounded roster. They don't have a lot of holes, so I kind of had to cheat and find somebody who is an X-Factor. Adafi Owe, I got on your screen. You've heard it a thousand times from a thousand different people. A freak athlete. And I know he didn't have any sacks at Penn State, but the pressures were there. And he is not necessarily an unrefined pass rusher. Like, he has a good skill set. He knows how to use his hands and he can win on the edge. So though he had no sacks and that is a little alarming, he knows how to win. And with that athletic skill set and go to a team that breeds pass rushers at that outside linebacker position, I think he's going to be fine. Honestly, when I do my betting uh, video later on, uh, I think he's a decent, you know, mid pick for uh, mid bet really, I guess is the way to do it. Uh, you have your like front runners that aren't always like great bets given that you're not gonna win a whole lot of money coming out of it. Then you have your mid tier bets that are, you know, that blend of like, they have a shot, but they're also, you know, a good bet, good value in the sense that you'll make some money out of it. And then you have your long shots where it's like, man, if they come away with this somehow, this is gonna be fantastic for my wallet. So I think Adolfo always somewhere there in the middle. Um, and when I do that video, I'll probably talk about him there, but I think he will have some pass rush success. And if he can become a reliable starter, that helps out a ton. And what I'm really interested to see is Tyus Bowser, I get he's only had like three sacks the past couple of years, um, or three sacks max over the past couple of years. And while I know that's a, a concern, I think that production gets better, especially with a guy like Owe, if he makes an immediate impact. Tyus Bowser is really good in coverage. And the Ravens drop their outside linebackers in coverage a lot. And they'll blitz guys like Malik Harrison and Patrick Queen, who I almost had some X Factor consider him an honorable mention. Those guys blitz a ton. And because of that, I want to see how Adafi Owe plays in space. On paper, you'd say great athlete, moves really well, should be fine covering the flats or you know dropping back into a hook zone, covering the middle of the field a little bit. But that's all on paper. It's just like, you know, cross-board analogy here. Andrew Wiggins, who's gotten better on defense, but is a freak athlete. So when he came into the league, people were like, this guy's going to be a good defender. And it really wasn't there. So while Owe is a fantastic athlete, I need to see it before I believe it. Uh, but if he can play in space on top of what I think he can do as a pass rusher right away for Baltimore, 
that's a huge addition for that defense. And it really shores up what's probably one of their last holes. Really, they could use some depth. So maybe they add a guy like Justin Houston, maybe. But you would figure him having to be a starter. Maybe like Adrian Claiborne. I think he's a decent name. He's been a rotation guy the past couple of years and you know played in Cleveland last year. Maybe better fit for a 4-3. But I think he's fine in a 3-4 outside linebacker position. Regardless, if Owe is able to make a big impact right away, that helps this team a ton, of course. Games to watch. These are going to be some fun ones here. Kansas City, Sunday Night Football Week 2. These are two of the best teams in the AFC. Ravens looking to play spoiler. Take that crown away from the Chiefs. Win the AFC. And it's prime time. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth on the call. You're watching that game. Simply put. The Chiefs have had their number, though. So this is a, also a prove-it game for Baltimore, where they can knock off the Chiefs early in the year. They're going to capture a lot of people's attention. Minnesota Week 9. This is interesting because uh, two run-heavy teams... Uh, and I want to see, you know, the battle of, you know, J.K. Dobbins and Lamar Jackson, also Gus Edwards, I guess, for Baltimore versus Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison, and then how the passing games are built off of that. Minnesota's done a really good job utilizing Kirk Cousins' skill set, using them in, you know, play-action boot situations and getting the most out of Adam Thielen, and Justin Jefferson. In Baltimore, maybe not play-action boot situations, but building a pass game after the run game is going to be a key, key point to this team potentially being a Super Bowl contender. So... That's kind of a fun matchup. The Vikings have been able to do it. Can the Ravens do it? And, you know, it's kind of fun AFC versus NFC. And they're two teams that are probably playoff caliber in a lot of people's eyes. Week 15 against Green Bay. Green Bay's in that top tier. Like I said, if they have Aaron Rodgers, you probably put them in that group one where they're certainly Super Bowl contenders. I know things are starting to get a little dicey. I'm not entirely sure Rodgers plays this year. Now Devontae Adams is starting to get a little frustrated. I think he plays. He's just probably going to come a free agent after this upcoming year. Won't re-sign, especially if Rodgers is gone. I definitely don't think he comes back. But uh, I think he does play this year. But this sets up a spot with you know two heavyweights from the AFC and the NFC going toe-to-toe. Hate to make it back-to-back NFC North opponents, but those are two fun games you should definitely check out if you're not a Ravens fan. And of course, if you're new to these, I don't put division games on there. Anytime the Ravens play the Browns, Duh, that's a big game. Anytime they play the Steelers, that's a huge rivalry. Even the Bengals, that's going to be a fun game to watch for Baltimore. So Chiefs, Vikings, Packers, looking forward to those in weeks 2, 9, and 15, respectively. But that'll do it for my 2021 Baltimore Ravens season preview. Let me hear your thoughts on the Ravens down in the comments section. How many wins did this team come away with, in your opinion? Who were some X factors outside of the people I named? What do you think about Greg Roman? That's kind of a fun discussion. Do you think Patrick Queen has a bounce back year too? Tons to talk about there. And also give me some games to watch. I'd love to have your thoughts. Let's talk about the Ravens down below. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel and want more sports content like this, please consider subscribing. That's going to do it for today's video. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, my name is Tiege. And I am signing off.